regular expressions are a way to identify patterns in data and return results that match those patterns. We have previously taken a look at some regular expressions and here are a few more. If one uses a regular expression within square brackets and a caret after the first square bracket, that means that we are looking for any characters in the result set that do not contain the following characters. For instance, if I did select star from the nation table where the nat name regular expression now every regular expression needs to go within quotes and I'm going to have an open closing square bracket. The caret sign is a negatory or negation character when it is used within the square brackets and if I say a hyphen z or capital A hyphen Z, what this regular expression is asking to return is those results where the nation name does not contain characters that exist within A to Z lowercase or A to Z uppercase. In this case, I'm going to have two results returned. The results are United Kingdom and United States for NAT name. Both these nations have spaces or characters that are not in A to Z or capital A to Z. Another regular expression pattern can search for a string that does not contain specified characters, such as in this case, select star from nation where nat name regular expression in this case we're going to look for a column not name not containing a specified character in any position in the specified column and so I don't want that name to be containing let's say the character s in any position and so I can say from the start and so the carrot indicates the start and the dollar indicates the end and so from the start to the end, I don't want nat name to contain lowercase s or capital case s. In any position, I need to add a star. And if I do this, I get two responses, India and UK, that where nat name does not contain lowercase s or uppercase s in any position from the beginning to the end. Another regular expression operation allows me to look for uh, strings that contain a repetition. For instance, select star from stock where the stock firm regular expression Again, regular expressions go in quotes, has the letter E that occurs twice. And so I'm returned those stocks, but the stock firm has two E's in succession, in repetition. So in this case, Fredonia, Sheep, Narimbeam, Geese, and Queensland have two E's in succession. I can use the OR operator with this as well. And so I can look for multiple patterns of repetition. Sometimes I might be interested in looking for multiple versions of a string. In that case, I can use the square brackets. So for instance, select star from stock where SDK firm regular expression has either I or O and IA. And so I am going to get N, I, and IA in Abyssinian Ruby, 
and O N I A in Fredonia Copper. So the square brackets allow me to have characters and then the sequence of characters after that. And so I'm going to look for multiple versions of the string I N I A or O N I A. The dot character in regular expressions allows me to use it as a placeholder. For instance, if I say select star from stock where STK firm regular expression and I will put dot within brackets and two followed by the letter T says that look for those stocks that have any two letters to start with but the third letter is a T. Since I want to do starts with I have to have a caret operator in the beginning and so what this reg statement states is that look for those stocks that start with any two characters to start with but have a third letter as T. And so the result I get is Patagonia T. Another way to express the same thing would be to have two dots and a T immediately after that with the carrot in front of it. Now there are a variety of different ways that regular expressions can get used in SQL. In fact regular expressions are a complete language and there are often textbooks written uh, about regular expressions and the ways to build regular expressions. Regular expressions are built into a variety of different programming languages including SQL. Because there is this variety in regular expressions, one can use a cheat sheet for regular expressions. This cheat sheet is available at regularexpressionslib.com or reg xlib.com and this cheat sheet can help one get started with regular expressions. One important type of query is known as the correlated subquery. We have seen regular subqueries before. A subquery is a query that is nested within another query. For instance, a query like the following. I'm going to select stocks where the quantity of stock is greater than the average quantity of stocks that are present in my data. For To get the average quantity of stocks, I would have to write a subquery This gives me the names of stocks where the quantity of stock, stock quantity, is greater than the average quantity of stock. If I run this query, I see stock firm Bolivian Sheep, Georgia Peach, Minnesota Gold, and Royal Ostrich Farm farms. Now I want you to remember that the stock table has information about NAT code and so if I would like I could get stock firm and NAT code to get information about stocks and the nations that they belong to where the stock quantity is greater than the average quantity of stock. And so have the UK, USA as the two countries about which I have stocks. These four firms have stocks greater than the overall average stock quantity. Another subquery that we can write is known as a correlated subquery. What we have just written over here is a regular subquery. In this regular subquery, I'm getting those stocks where the stock quantity is greater than the average stock quantity. In a correlated subquery, 
the question I might ask is, give me the names of stocks where the stock quantity is greater than the average stock quantity of the specific nation that that stock comes from. So, something like this. To get this result, one needs to write a correlated subquery. What we would like to do in a correlated subquery is relate the outer query to the inner query. In a regular subquery, the outer query and the inner query are not related to each other. The inner query select average stock quantity from stock can run independently from the outer query. In a correlated subquery, these two are in fact related to each other. Here's how. From stock, join nation. I'm joining nation because I want nat name. And now I have my where clause where SDK QTY is greater. Now, instead of just using select average stock quantity from stock, I want the average stock quantity of each stock that's being evaluated in the outer query. And to do that, I have to write a different kind of subquery. I have to write a correlated subquery. I have to say select average stock quantity from stock where. And so I have to pick specific stocks from the stock table to get the average. And the stocks that I'm interested in is where the stock table's NAT code is equal to the nation table's NAT code. If I run this subquery, this is a correlated subquery. And you will notice that in the correlated subquery, I don't get the same results. In the correlated subquery, I get one result for Australia, two from the UK, and one from the United States. In the regular subquery, this one right here, I had two from the UK and two from the USA, and none from Australia or India. In this case, with the correlated subquery, I have one from Australia, two from the UK, and one from the United States. The reason that this is called a correlated subquery is because of this WHERE clause that is present in the subquery. This WHERE clause relates the inner query over here to the outer query over here. In the inner query, we are having a constraint imposed on stock.nat code. Stock.nat code belongs to the stock table. And so what I am doing, or what this query is doing specifically, is constraining this value of stock.nat code to specific values of nation.nat code. Those values of nation.nat code are coming from the join statement. The two tables are being joined on nation.nat code. And for each stock, nation.nat code has a specific value. That is US, Australia, UK, and IND. And it is that value that is moving from the outer query to the inner query to give us the result, the average stock quantity from stock, where we are picking stock.nat code equal to a certain value, either AUS or IND or UK or USA. This is a correlated subquery because it relates the inner query right here to the outer query. The way you know that this is a correlated subquery is because when one tries to run the inner query by itself, and so if I try to say select average stock quantity from stock where stock.nat code is equal to nation.cat nat code and try to run this independently of the query itself, it will not execute. I will get an error message that says that I don't know or it doesn't know what nation.nat code is. 
that nation.nat code, when used within the correlated subquery, gets its information from the outer query. This is a correlated subquery. Views are an imaginary table that are constructed by database administrators and database managers when required. Sometimes one wants to give access to users to see data without actually being able to uh, access the raw tables that are actually present in the database. For that purpose, one can use a view. A view is a definition of a table, not the table that actually stores the data itself. To create a view, one needs to use the create a view statement. Now, a view has to have a name, and so let's give view a name. In this case, I'm going to call it view1. It's a very simple name. And one needs to specify the columns that are present within this view. And so, again, working with this idea of stock and nation, I can have a view with nation name as one column, stock name as another column, stock quantity as a third column, and stock value as a fourth column. So this view, or this definition of a table, has four columns, nation name, stock name, stock quantity, and stock value. Now, this view is actually created from a select statement. And so I would have to select the specific columns that I want to be associated. In this case, nat name, because that's the name of the actual column that holds the data for nation name. SDK firm, because that's the actual stock name. Stock quantity is SDK QTY. And stock value. Now, to obtain stock value, I might actually have to multiply SDK QTY multiplied by stock price multiplied by the exchange rate that was actually present in the nation table. Now, I can get this from the stock table joined to the nation table on nation.natcode is equal to stock.natcode. And so we have a query, a select query that has four columns. These four columns are going to use to be creating a view. And in the view, these columns are going to have slightly different names. They're going to have nation name, stock name, stock quantity, and stock value. If one runs this statement, you can see that a view has been created. Well, where is a view stored? It is stored under the views that are present right here. If one clicks on the down arrow, one should see the view. And if you don't see the view, click on the refresh button right there. Clicking on the refresh button brings the view up. It's called view one. If one wants to use the view, one can treat the view as one would a table. And so an end user might not actually know the difference between accessing an actual table and accessing a view. I can just write select star from view one. And if I run this statement, I will literally get the results I would see if I were accessing a table. I have nation name, that's the name of the column that I specified over here. Stock name, again the name of the column over here, stock quantity and stock value. The tables have been joined together. It's been stored as a view. And so that's what I have right here. Consequently, a view is the definition of a table. It is not the actual data that is present within the table.